This is going to be a big one. How do you take all this and go forward? One of the most important things you'll do is be able to set milestones and set goals. And there's an art form to it. It's fairly basic, it's mundane, but I think we need to go through it. And your goals should be your guiding, guiding elements that will guide you through your work efforts. When I talked about organizational uh, work efforts, this is what we're talking about. And there's a remarkable difference when you actually study goals. Uh, particularly when you look at people's one-year goals compared to their five-year goals. Typically, people with one-year goals vastly underperform. They don't achieve what they think they can do in, in one year. I find that interesting. You know, New Year's resolutions are the big one. What are you going to get done this year? All right. The surpri really surprising one is five-year goals. 67% of the time, people exceed their five-year goals. They underappreciate what they can do in a relatively short period of time. Five years isn't that long. Maybe to you guys, you're, you're young. To me, it's had a number of five-year goals. <laughs> but the issue is this. Understand that you can probably exceed more in five years. So it pays to actually think big. The nice thing about thinking big, they inspire. And inspiration is an terribly, terribly valuable tool to have in your back pocket. Because when it's cold, wet, muddy, when you're tired, you're drained, you're working alone, and there's nobody else around you, it'll warm you. It will warm you. All right. Now let's talk about the range markers. I think if you're going to have a good set of goals, you should probably go five years out. One year should be coming in. And I think you need to fill in the gaps. These are going to be the range markers. Because it's not, you just want, don't want to have distant goals. You want to be able to have them set at evil, even increments. So what I would sit down and say, if you're going to have five-year goals, recognize that three, or recognize that your four, three, and two-year goals should line up. They're going to be big. You may not, they may be a little nebulous, but those should be leading up to your five-year goals. Likewise, one-year goals, these are going to be more actionable, more direct. These are going to be ones you're going to be thinking on a regular basis and knowing, I need to be looking and doing the following things. Those should be broken down by months, nine, six, three months. I'll even bring it down to 30 days. So I know in a 30-day period, I've got to get these things done. And the way I know I'm going to get those 30 days things done, I have a weekly goal. And it's probably four or five. I'm overworked. That's why I have this body. I list them out. All right? Part of that will be journaling. I will tell you right now, just don't put this on a small piece of paper. Create a Word document on each sheet. Have a range goal. List that shit out. What gets written down has a higher percentage of getting completed than the stuff you don't. It just is. Mark it off. All right? Review it regularly. I review mine weekly. Problem with that, I've got a goddamn to-do list that's pages long. It's daunting. Every day I look at this goddamn to-do list again and again and again and again. It's nothing but a to-do list. Self-defeating. So I'm going to tell you something else that I found very valuable. On the last sheet, January 1, put the date and the year. Every goal you got done for the week, in the month, wherever it lies, that shit gets win in the win column. Put the wins in the win column. And every time you look at your to-do list, you look at your win column. Every time. I will also tell you this. Open the goddamn thing up two or three times and only look at the win column. Because you know what? You need to sit down and celebrate your wins. You need that momentum. You need that success to pull you through. Not artificially, not externally from Tony Robbins or anyone else, me or anyone else, your friends or your family. Yourself. Because you're judging yourself by your own standards. You know what those are. And when you're able to look at your successes objectively by your own standards and see win after win after win after win, wins you forgot about, wins you don't really remember, oh yeah, I did do that, oh yeah, I did do that, and you're building memory of success after success after success, you're going to get somewhere. Last one. As Americans, we don't celebrate enough, not in a typical fashion. You need to celebrate your wins when they're significant. You need to celebrate them when you've actually put out efforts. One of the reasons why I have a bottle of champagne in my fridge, no matter what else is in there. When I was barely making rent, I had an $8 bottle of champagne in the fridge. When I couldn't afford that, I had a split. And when I had a significant win, 
that shit got opened. That's how you celebrate your life. Because you know what? You celebrate it daily. You celebrate it with wins. Because if you don't, you never will. You never will.